Good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Worcester City Council held this Monday, November 15th, 2021 in Council Chambers and it is being live streamed on YouTube. It's after 7.30 p.m. The next meeting will be Monday, believe it or not, December 6, 2021. Mr. Paulo, would you please call the roll? Mr. Ansel? Here. Mr. Bistanzik? Here. Mr. Cavan? Here. Mr. Myers? Here. Mr. Sanders? Here. Mr. Silvestri? Here. Ms. Warden? Here. As they would say, everyone's present and accounted for, so we do have a quorum. The agenda will remain as presented. And at this time, I'd ask you to stand and join the members of City Council in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I would look for a motion for the approval of the minutes of the council meeting held November 1st, 2021. So moved. Motion to approve by Mr. Ansel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Silvestri. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Then the meeting minutes of November 1st, 2021 have passed. I see someone dusted off my gavel just in case. That's uh, in reference to last meeting. Uh, communications from the mayor and administration. Mr. Mayor, welcome. Thank you, President Beitendike and members of council. Nice to see everyone this evening. Um, start off by saying congratulations and best wishes to the winners of the most uh, current election, Jen Warden. Scott Myers, Bob Reynolds, and Barb Knappick. We look forward to working with them and the rest of you as the, we move our city forward here in the future. Uh, the administration presented its proposed 2022 balanced budget for our city with this week's city council packet and council's finance committee held its first review at a committee meeting this evening. Mr. Ansel will present his comments on this in his committee report. So I will not uh, steal that thunder there, Mr. Ansel. I will briefly state that the proposed 2022 budget contains um, a projected general fund revenues and carryover of $43.4 million and appropriations of $29.5 million, leaving a balance of $13.8 million of carryover into the 2023 year. A projected capital improvement fund and revenues carryover of seven uh, fund and revenues and carryover of $7 million and appropriations of $6.99 million, leaving a balance of 19000 carryover into the 2023 year. And projected enterprise fund, water, wastewater, hospital, and uh, a number of funds in there, revenues and carryover of $314.1 million and appropriations of 203 million Point six million, leaving a balance of 110.3 million of carryover into the 2023 year. Uh, our thanks go to uh, many in the city uh, environment of uh, employees who work hard to put this budget together. It starts with our management team, uh, who really are the experts within their own uh, respective worlds. They uh, take the initial uh, charge into a budget. And then it gets into our uh, uh, hierarchy of uh, our directors and, uh, and managers working together to sort of hone it down into a final document. And then it comes to city council with uh, that uh, input for uh, your review and, and approval. So, so it, it's a, a big process, but uh, we've had many years of doing it. And uh, Andre Doherty is to be congratulated and his whole finance team for, for doing such an excellent job of, of putting the whole document together. Um, the proposed budget does contain uh, recommended growth in our city's structure of four positions, which are uh, PPM or our uh, public property maintenance division, one trade person for traffic control, 
and one park slash urban forestry position. Our distribution and collections of one utility operator trainee and our administration, one uh, deputy director of administration. Uh, this is uh, sort of a rare thing because we don't usually have a lot of growth and haven't over the years, but we are starting to uh, feel the, the, the crunch of uh, extra workload and uh, really need some uh, uh, extra bodies to help make that happen. Uh, the administration has begun our negotiations with our collective bargaining teams in all of our police, fire, and Worcester Employee Association units. Things are moving forward, and we appreciate the input and conversations that each group has brought to the meetings. All current contracts are up by the end of this year. And lastly, um, the last agenda item that was uh, put on to uh, really just today and, and placed in this revised uh, agenda is uh, for our public property maintenance uh, division in a, uh, doing some some TLC work to the building that they're in. Uh, the building was built in 1973, so 48 years ago. Uh, it had a new roof placed on it five years ago at a cost of about 200,000. Siding and installation <coughs> about three years ago, again, about 200,000. And then this interior work today, um, which is, uh, and of course it's buried under one of these. 250,000. It is going to have offices, locker rooms, uh, lunch and training uh, rooms, and a new entrance uh, if it's approved. And that would be approximately $250,000 uh, cost. But at that point, essentially, that building is, is uh, fully up to uh, snuff and, and grade and hopefully give us another 50-some years of, of life for the city. So we are here to help uh, throughout the whole conversations and to answer any questions council might have. So. Thank you. And you have an appointee request, is that correct? I do have an appointee uh, request. Thank you, President Biden. I, um, I'm asking that Chuck, Mr. Chuck Armbruster, who is um, on our uh, planning commission, that he be appointed as a representative on the uh, CRA Housing Commission. So uh, he's taking the place of Gil Ning, who had served in that position earlier. So thank All you right, for that. Thank you. And, uh, I think at this point in time would be the appropriate uh, time to uh, discuss and uh, vote on the uh, request by the mayor to uh, appoint uh, Mr. Armbruster on the uh, Community Reinvestment Area Housing Commission. Mr. President, motion to approve. All right, motion to approve by Mr. Silvestri. Is that a second I saw? Second, second by uh, Mr. Myers. Any further discussion? President Biden, I just want to note that I've attended a number of planning commission meetings where Mr. Armbruster has been president. I think he's done an excellent job representing the citizens. He asks considered and thoughtful questions, and I think he'll do a great job serving on the CRA board. All right. Thank you. Seeing nothing else, would you uh, please call the roll on the uh, appointment of Mr. Armbruster? Mr. Ansel? Yes. Mr. Bostancic? Yes. Mr. Cavan? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Sanders? Yes. Mr. Silvestri? Yes. And Ms. Warden? Yes. Well, Mr. Chuck Armbruster has been approved, and uh, thank, you, thank him for counsel for volunteering to serve. Appreciate it. At the moment, we do not have any uh, petitions. Uh, yeah, but we do have a number of people uh, signed up to uh, speak on uh, agenda items. And I'm going to just start from the top. Uh, Ms. Shannon Waller, and I know Ms. Waller is the head of Main Street. So Ms. Waller, if you want to come and uh, speak and state your address and uh, what you are going to talk about. 
Thank you, President Beitendike, members of City Council. Uh, my name is Shannon Waller. I am the Executive Director of Main Street Worcester, and I live at 3574 Melrose Drive in Worcester. And I'm here to encourage the members of City Council to renew the economic development funding that you have traditionally shared among three organizations, Main Street Worcester, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and the Worcester Area Chamber of Commerce. We were very grateful for the additional funding that you allowed us in 2021. That made a huge difference to our organizations, and we hope that we have proven ourselves worthy of that funding and the trust that you placed in us to use that funding wisely. Main Street Worcester uh, historically has put on about 42 events and attractions annually. That was what we had done in 2019. In 2021, we put on 82 events and attractions. So we really uh, swung for the fences as far as trying to get people downtown. We estimate that there were about 17,000 attendees over the course of all our events, and that would be Main Street Music, the Taste of Downtown, uh, the Shop Hops, the Second Saturdays. And uh, we have gotten some data from the College of Worcester that estimates that each attendee to that event spends $26.58 in addition to the cost of any ticket, which our events are primarily free. So that's an economic impact just for the Main Street Worcester part of it of almost $450,000. So we hope that you continue to entrust us with those economic development funds, and uh, we ask your blessing to the request that the joint organizations have made for uh, the shared uh, division of bed tax money. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have uh, Ms. Ch Jackie Chamberlain, <coughs> Chamberlain, who's uh, with the Wayne County Convention and Visitors Bureau. And again, I'd ask you to state your name and address and what you're going to talk about. Jackie Chamberlain. I actually live in Shreve, Ohio, but my business address is in the Wayne County Administration Building at 428 West Liberty Street in Worcester. I, um, am, I wasn't supposed to be here tonight. You're usually used to seeing Martha Starkey, who is our director, and she is in Cleveland. We knew this would happen sometime, but it's the National Tourist Association Conference, and she is in downtown Cleveland tonight talking to many groups, urging them to come to Wayne County, spend their money, spend their tourism money, bring their motor coach groups, bring their groups. Um, it's something that we really, really enjoy doing, and we really hope that... Uh, it's, it's, it's looking up for us, and we're really happy about that. We appreciate the console so much and the monies that you've given. I gave each of you a bag. You can kind of see the little, the little chot keys that we do give out in the welcome bags. Um, it's been a good year for us. Things are looking up. Last year, of course, it wasn't so great, but we are looking up. My one that I'm really proud of in the bag, it's, it's the Wayne County. It's the fan that we did use this year for the Welcome the Ohio Light Opera. Um, fans back, uh, so we were said we're a fan of the Ohio Light Opera because they were outside most of their uh, performances this year. There was a little bit of a concern about the heat, so we did give the, each, each of them a fan, which we really enjoyed. So we appreciate the funds. We hope that we can continue this um, strong alliance that we have with our travel partners. We just really appreciate all that you do for Worcester. We love Wayne County. We love Worcester. We're just very excited that we have something so great to be able to promote. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. And speaking of promotion, I'm going to promote uh, Ms. Chamberlain a little bit. A little bit of trivia is that she also does a Miss Kringle uh, gig. <laughs> mm -hmm. And thanks to her recommendation, and this will only mean something to us baby boomers, uh, <laughs> she helped the, uh, find the new... Mr. Jingling, that is making appearances in north uh, northeastern Ohio and up in Cleveland. So we we'll probably should do that as a segue to invite everybody to Main Street's event on Friday night. We'll be in downtown uh, for Window Wonderland. So well, there you go. That worked. We'll do that while we're worked doing out that. real well. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Uh, we have uh, Samira Zimmerly, who's the executive director of the Worcester Chamber of Commerce. Again, your name, please, and address, and what you're talking about. Samira Zimmerly with the Worcester Chamber, and I am here representing 377 West Liberty Street. 
So first, I just want to thank all of you and echo a lot of what the other two have said. We've really appreciated the extra support that you gave us in 2021. It proved to be another challenging year, uh, but we were really excited to be able to get some things back to normal. We were one of the first groups to put on a large event with the Wayne County Home and Garden Show. And although it was only half capacity, it was nice to just be able to bring some of those things back. Uh, since then, we are back to our full programming. We've re-kicked off Leadership Worcester, which has been really nice to get that program up and running. Our membership has grown tremendously this year, so I think that that's a testament to the services that we've offered. While we weren't able to offer a lot of the normal events, we kind of shifted to trying to be more of a resource to our business community, and I think that that has really shown through. Um, and, you know, just being a part of this community, uh, we were named the National Chamber of the Year this year, and I think that a big part of that is, you know, just the community that we live in and the support that we show one another. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you would have and really appreciate your continued support. And most importantly, the wiener dog race came out. <laughs> we did have 80 wiener dogs at Worcester mm -hmm. Fest this yeah, year. <laughs> I, yeah, they, the dachshunds must have their own little uh, website to, to post. Uh, yes. that, that was a lot of dachshunds. There sure was. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Emerly. Uh, Beth Beatty? All right. They're going to defer. <laughs> oh, you're going to wait until. Yeah, they're, they're part of my. Okay. I, I just, just won't, didn't want, they signed up. I didn't want to give them a short shrift. And uh, I, I also see Ms. Bowles hiding be, behind you and uh, her name on here. And the last one to speak that is signed up is uh, then uh, Desiree Weber. If you, you know, state your name and address and what you're talking about. Um, my name is Desiree Weber. I live at 124 East Liberty Street. Um, and I wanted to speak on Resolution 2021-62, the transportation bill, um, and to encourage city council members to support it. Um, this allocation of $600,000 towards city transportation needs, I think, is really important to this community. This program is much needed in the city. Um, as lots of folks in the room already know, mobility has a strong positive effect on employment prospects for everyone, for people's ability to make their own choices about where to be or where to live in the city, even if they don't have access to transportation otherwise. And I want to encourage council also to continue to allocate city funding to amenities like transportation in general that support the least well-off in our community. Um, yes, increasing the tax base of Worcester is very important. Yes, increasing and attracting visitors to this community is also very important. But um, so is the quality of life for the people that live here on an everyday basis. And that, again, some of them are the least well-off in our community. So for every Worcester resident, especially those whose quality of life can be significantly improved by what turns out to still be a relatively small portion of city budget, that's something that I'm asking city council to continue to take seriously and to continue to support not only in this particular bill, 2021-62, uh, but in others that may come up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ansel, you had a finance committee uh, meeting. You want to give a report? To, yes, we that? had our first work session for the 2022 capital appropriation budget. We had a full crowd and representatives from the finance committee. Thank you all for attending council members and uh, the administration and respective staffs. It was a, a very thorough summary. Uh, reviewing the narrative, uh, the rationalization plan, um, how we finished, uh, how we're anticipating to finish this year and looking at next year's projections. And I'll just give a highlight of where we are planning to finish in 2021 to talk about the, the confidence that we have in the administration's budgeting forecast to actual uh, final outcome. Uh, the 2021 budget was a little over $26 million. The year-end forecast, we look to have about 
$27.9 million of tax receipts. So that is a nearly $2 million positive variance to current year. The trend continues as it relates to expenditures. In 2021, total cost of city operation was projected at about $24.4 million. We actually are going to finish at about $22,100,000. So a below expense performance of about $2.2 million. So we look at higher revenues than, than anticipated, lower expenditures than anticipated, exceptional budgetary performance. And this trend has continued uh, for my 12 years uh, as finance chairman and prior to that when Mr. Brenneman was finance chair. So we have strong physical management on behalf of the city and we're so fortunate to have the economic rebound coming out of the re most recent pandemic crisis. It appears that our industrial and our employment base is flourishing. Uh, taxes, income tax drives the primary receipts for the city. So Worcester is alive and well. And next year's budget is projected at about $28.5 million revenue, $25 million worth of expenses. The carryover funds go toward infrastructure improvement that are going to be heavy investments as the, as the city continues to invest those funds for our streets, our safety services, our wastewater and water uh, processing. So the investments are being uh, managed very well, very effectively, and the financial status of the city of Worcester is uh, very positive and very strong. And we'll go into a, a brief first reading this evening, but thank you all for attending. We are having another finance committee uh, meeting uh, the first uh, Monday in December at 6.30 of which we'll be reviewing primarily the Enterprise Fund budget, i.e. the Worcester Community Hospital, as well as additional capital appropriations based on our five and 10 year plan within the city of Worcester. So it'll be another productive work session. Uh, thank you, administration and finance, for the detail, the thoroughness uh, to allow us to have the proper visibility to make those decisions in the upcoming year. So congratulations, thank you again, and look forward to another productive session in a couple weeks. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you for that summary, and I must commend uh, the city and, and the council for uh, our attention to budgetary matters, because we're going go out of 2021 with approximately half a year's worth of uh, funds. And I, I don't know if you've followed other communities, some communities by the end of 2020 were on the ropes financially. So we came through a tough period uh, uh, in uh, good shape and uh, have started strong here in 2021. So. Uh, congratulations to everyone involved. Uh, we have no unfinished business. We'll go right into new business. And the uh, first reading will be a resolution number 2021-62. It'll be pre presented by Mr. Myers. It's slated for three readings. And uh, before I get to you, Mr. Myers, I will ask Ms. Apollo to please read the uh, title. Resolution number 2021-62, a resolution authorizing the Director of Administration to contract with Community Action of Wayne Medina Counties for the provision of transportation services for qualified participants and allowing for immediate enactment. Uh, Mr. Myers, uh, the floor is yours, and I understand you probably will defer to some folks. I brought who... guest speakers, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just want to note that this has been an incredibly successful program in my eight years on council. It started out uh, a pretty meager program with, uh, as was sometimes pointed out by President Biden Dyke and former council, I'm in Albright that the taxi service back then was 
was not in the best of condition and and uh, left a little bit of desire as far as the quality of the service. We've now uh, come full circle and we've got an excellent program running in our community. Uh, and I'm going to introduce Ashley Hirschberger, who is a big part of that, to talk about the successes and where we are with the numbers. And then there are a couple other folks that are going to speak as well. So, All right. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Um, I really always enjoy presenting this piece. Um, it's a really great program in our community. And um, with us um, over here, we have Leslie Baus, um, the Wayne County Mobility Manager for the last how many years? <coughs> six years. Um, Beth Beatty is a citizen who uses our program um, and is also one of the stars of the Worcester Transportation Program video that a Citizens Advisory Council has put together, which I will send you the link of if you haven't seen it already. Um, it's a wonderful video uh, put together about how to use our transportation program. Um, and then we have Melissa Pierce, who um, is the CEO is that the correct term, of community action? Um, and I did just want to say these three women um, have been amazing for this program in our community and the things they've done to um, just really rejuvenate and bring to life our transportation program. There's still room for improvement. We all know that. Um, but they've just been instrumental. Um, Leslie and Melissa are moving on to bigger and better things. Um, and I did just want to um, also highlight Beth for um, a lot of the walking audits she's been doing for our community lately, um, really checking out our sidewalks um, and seeing what improvements can be made for um, visually impaired residents as well. Um, so I think that's something that gets lost um, in this program, but that is also an important piece of it as well. Um, so I'm just going to go over a few of the program highlights for you, and then I'm going to pass the mic off to Leslie and Beth to give a few um, um, some, for, some more information on the program as well. Um, so, as a lot of people in the room know, and some of you don't, uh, the transportation program impacts a variety of citizens. That includes elderly, disabled, our community's veterans and active military, as well as those who income qualify. Um, we work hand in hand with social service agencies like the Counseling Center, Community Action, Goodwill 180, and the Viola Startsman Clinic, who purchase and distribute passes to their clients. There's also wheelchair accessible transportation available, which is something in 2016 was not anywhere in our city. Um, and that's provided by Gilcrest Transportation and Worcester Transit. Employment and education passes get our residents to over 75 work sites and, employ and education sites um, within five miles in, inside the city limits and within five miles of the limits. This also includes taking children to daycare, and as a mom, I know how important that is, um, getting your kids to daycare while going to and from work and um, education sites. Worcester Transit is running two fixed routes um, that stop at medical, residential, corporate, and retail locations with benefit all of our city's res residents and visitors to our community. We have five providers on our program, Hallstar, Gilcrest, Precious Angel Transportation, Worcester Express, and Worcester Transit. These providers have utilized grant funding available through our program to get their vehicles up to code and getting drivers and vehicles licensed. Um, something that was new this year was training was provided um, that included passenger assistance, safety, and security, defensive driving, first aid and CPR, and emergency and evacuation procedures. As, as it was last year, proxy riders were allowed to use passes to get food and prescriptions for those enrolled in the program who were high risk for contracting COVID-19. For those without a proxy, providers were also able to pick up the food and prescriptions for pass holders at locations such as the Worcester Hope Center. Um, some comparable data for you. Um, Renewals were suspended um, in 2020, and so um, we saw some new members, but there may have been some members who um, came off that program for various reasons. Um, so our numbers are a little bit lower this year. There was an audit done on the active members. Um, so right now we have 716 active participants um, on the program. What's really neat to see is that I know in 2019, we really saw the program take off, and that was evident in March and February or January, February, March of 2020. And then COVID happened, and we saw a significant decline. Um, if we're comparably looking at numbers, from 2019, October 31st of 2019, 66,721 rides were provided to our citizens. As of October 31st of 2021, 65,117 rides were provided. So we are gradually making our way back into the numbers we were looking at in 2019, and these three women over here are a huge testament to that, um, of how they've been creative and, and figured out ways to get our citizens to the places they need to be and the things that they need to them. 
So um, with that, if you have any questions for me, um, I'm open to that. Um, or I can have Leslie and Beth come up. Hello, I'm Beth Beatty. I live at 4400 Melrose Drive. Um, you all remember me from crying like a baby last year. I'm going to do it again. I'm very passionate about this program. Uh, I put my heart and soul into it. Uh, I've lived up here for four years. I moved to the city because I needed uh, public transportation. When Because of my vision, I was no longer able to drive. Um, I kind of got thrown into the system for a medical reason, and now I'm in it because I just... Uh, I've taken it on as such a passion. As chairperson of the Citizens Transportation Advisory Committee, I'm out every day doing something with our city, with people who uh, have the needs of transportation also. I, um, I ride the bus, I use every taxi uh, system, and I take every one of those needs home with me and personally find a way to uh, provide anything these people need because it's, it's it's, uh, I can feel their needs because I have the same kind of needs. So I'm here in support of the Worcester Transportation Program to ask for your continued support and uh, provisions for it. Um, I can't tell you enough what it means to our residents and um, what great need it is and how, when she said quality of life, I, I don't know where I'd be without it. I count on for just about everything but getting to church. I get a personal ride to church, but uh, shopping, just uh, my banking, I volunteer at People to People, so I get down there every week. I uh, do a lot of uh, service work for the city and other organizations, so I'm just here in support of it. Thank you for considering keeping the program going. It's a good thing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, I'm Leslie Baus. Uh, I'm the uh, former Wayne County Mobility Coordinator, but I'm also a citizen here. I live at 1738 Normandy Drive. Um, and. I just want to say thank you for all the support for this program you've uh, shown in the past. Um, as Beth has said, it's made quite a difference. Uh, where I live, the end of town, the West End over there by Westview Manor, um, prior to having the bus there, um, it was really a challenge for people to get around town. And I must say that every day when I drive past the bus stop at Mindy Lane and, and uh, Normandy and at um, Mindy Lane and down by Mechanicsburg and I see people there I am busting with pride um, because I'm seeing people who are using this to get to work to get to school um, I know there's one lady there who is uh, deaf and actually from another country and this bus system means everything for her to be able to get around um, to to do the things that she needs to do I have a quality of life and and so you know just having this means a lot I know when I talk to people um, they have said that it's a godsend um, especially in 2020 when we were um, able to get food to people who could not get out um, they said they don't know what they would have done without this so you know it, it's a good investment um, I have read that for every $1 you invest in transportation, you get a $4 return um, in economic impact. Um, so I'm hoping that we see, see that. I'm sure we do, just for the fact that we have people who are getting to work um, and going to Walmart. I processed the sheets for the rides for the transit um, to Walmart, and, you know, they're, they're looking at about 1,800, at least 1,800 rides to them every month. So it's definitely helping our, our local economy. So thank you, and um, I hope you continue supporting this program. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Leslie. Thank you. Uh, did any councilmen have any questions for any of the speakers or about the program in general? I'd just like to thank uh, Ms. Beatty and Ms. Bass for um, giving their uh, sort of personal uh, anecdotes about the program, I think that helps add a, a perspective that when we're looking at numbers and budgets and numbers of rides, I think it's um, also helpful to hear, uh, you know, personal stories about how, how this impacts um, members in our, our community. So thank you. 
Thank you. If there are no further questions or comments, um, I think this is an excellent program. We've all been through this for the last number of years. It hasn't changed significantly other than it's, uh, it's been continued to be successful and grow. Um, I'm going to ask that we suspend the rules this evening and move this to third and final reading. Okay, a motion by Mr. Myers to suspend the rules. Is there a second? Second. Cavan. Heard Mr. Cavan first. Uh, seconded by Mr. Cavan. Would you please call the roll on the suspension of the rules? Bestanzik? Yes. Myers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Warden? Yes. Ansel? Yes. And Cavan? Yes. The rules have been suspended, Mr. Myers. A uh, motion to adopt resolution 21, or excuse me, 2021-62. A uh, motion to adopt mis by Mr. Myers. Uh, is there a second? A second. Second by Mr. Bestanzik. Any further discussion? Seeing none, would you please call the roll on the motion to adopt? Bestanzik? Yes. Myers? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Warden? Yes. Ansel? Yes. And Cavan? Yes. Resolution number 2021-62 passes, and I will say, Ms. Beatty, it's citizens like you that make Worcester a wonderful place to live, and thank you for your volunteerism uh, and your passion for this program and the uh, good work you do for the city at large. So we could use more people like you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the first reading of Ordinance 2021-37. It'll be presented by Mr. Ansel. It is slated for three reading, and I know there is much discussion on this uh, to be had in the future. But I t before I turn it over to you, Mr. Ansel, I will ask Ms. Uh, DePaulo to please read the title. Ordinance number 2021-37, an ordinance appropriating from various funds to individual accounts for the current expenses and other expenditures for the City of Worcester for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2022, and allowing for immediate enactment. Mr. Ansel, the floor is yours. Yes, as highlighted earlier, this is the 2022 appropriation budget for the City of Worcester. We will have an additional work session in two weeks, and we'll keep this on first reading this evening. If Council has any specific questions, I would ask that you forward those uh, to Mr. Dordia, Mr. Montgomery, and the Mayor and copy council so we can see any questions that might arise so we can maintain the efficiency of our upcoming meeting. Thank you. All right. Uh, we will consider ordinance number 2021-37 as having its first reading. That brings us to resolution number 2021-63. It too will be presented by Mr. Ansel, and like the previous one, it is slated for three readings. But uh, as in the last ordinance uh, reading, I need Ms. DePaulo, if she would be so kind to read the title of this resolution. Resolution number 2021-63. A resolution authorizing agreements with various applicants for the use of economic development monies. Mr. Ansel, the floor is yours, sir. Yes, first and foremost, I want to thank the representatives this evening of the joint request for bed tax allocation. We have a marvelous track record of one request versus a free for all for the available monies. As you're all aware, we receive bed tax receipts from all of our inns in the Worcester area. That money is then held and then reinvested in those drivers of our local tourism economy. As uh, the return on investment is significant, as was highlighted by our guest this evening, but the real dynamics goes into the reward and recognition of the hard work that the 
uh, entities, whether it be Worcester Chamber, Main Street, or the Wayne County Convention Bureau generates. And it is significant. I can't tell you the feedback that I receive from our international guests and domestics, the guests that come to Worcester downtown. There truly is a wow factor in our local economy in terms of the presence and the polish and the feel and just the overall impact that our downtown and our community in general has. And that's being driven uh, not only by our citizens, but our economic drivers within the community, as I highlighted. And I thank Samara and Shannon and Marty and Jackie for their hard work to accomplish that. And also I want to highlight and thank Council, uh, as noted, uh, because of the COVID challenge, we know that uh, uh, there wasn't much tourism for a year and a half, two years, and Council decided last year to give all but 4% of the bed tax receipts to the entities because the prior year they struggled so significantly. I mean, when I talk about struggling significantly, you know, 20, 15 to 20% of what they were routine, routinely receiving in terms of funds. But the unification and the collaboration of these three entities, and the math is pretty simple. Of the first $50,000 received in bed taxes, Main Street gets 57.5% of that $50,000. The Worcester Area Chamber gets 37 and a half and the Wayne County Convention Bureau gets 5%. Anything over 50,000, it goes 50, 30, and 20, respectively. The city retains a portion of that, but the rest is reinvested in our community partners. This year uh, was a very, very positive year uh, because of the additional funding that we provided, but they really had a challenge the prior year. They received virtually minimal funds. This year, or for 2022, we're projecting the allocation to Main Street Worcester being somewhere about $73,000, the Worcester Chamber of Commerce somewhere around $45,000, and the Wayne County Convention Bureau $20,000. So of the $288,000 being received in bed taxes, the bulk of that money goes back to our community partners. The, the city retains some for administrative functions and reinvestment in tourism and our local economy. But having a unified request for um, the last 15 years has been a remarkable accomplishment. So thank you. Keep up the great work and your collaborative partnership because it, is, uh, it makes it much easier for us to deliberate and take these funds and reallocate and reinvest in those community drivers. So thank you for all of your hard work. We're all pretty familiar with this process, so that being noted, and uh, Mr. Doherty has provided kind of projected uh, budgetary forecasts, I would ask tonight that we suspend the rules of council and move resolution 2021-63 to third and final reading. A motion to suspend the rules by Mr. Ansel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Myers. Would you please call the roll on the suspension of the rules? Sanders? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Warden? Yes. Ansel? Yes. Cavan? Yes. Stancic? Yes. And Myers? Yes. <clears throat> rules have been suspended. Mr. Ansel, I look to you again. Keep up the good work, team out there. Thank you very much. Motion to adopt, Mr. Motion President. to adopt by Mr. Ansel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Silvestri. Any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, would you please call the roll on the motion to adopt? <coughs> Sanders? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Warden? Yes. Ansel? Yes. Cavan? Yes. Vistanzik? Yes. And Myers? Yes. Resolution number 2021-63 passes. Thank you, one and all. Appreciate all the hard work. And because of you, we have a thriving uh, downtown and a thriving uh, 
uh, economy, for tourism, and uh, couldn't have been be done without uh, all the efforts you put in. Thank you. Thanks. And if you'd like to leave, you are more than welcome. <laughs> if you want to stay and see how this ends, you're more than welcome, too. But uh, you've waited a long time, and uh, I appreciate your patience. See you later. That brings us to the uh, miscellaneous uh, portion, and we have some people signed up. Well, no, we have oh, one more. Good. Oh, yeah, that's one more right. piece. There's I one did more. say that. We, <laughs> we have one more. I know. Well, you know, I was trying to bounce between. <laughs> that additional one got put on after I, I made my script. So. I understand. <laughs> so without that script, I'm lost. Okay, we do have one more. Uh, resolution number 2021-64. It will be presented by uh, Miss Warden. And I think this is the only budgeted item we have uh, tonight. So mm -hmm. it would not require suspension of the rules, but does require me to let Ms. DePaulo, if she would, uh, read the title. Resolution number 2021-64. A resolution authorizing the Director of Administration to advertise according to law and enter into a contract with the lowest and best bidder to renovate, to renovate the public property's maintenance facility and allowing for immediate enactment. Ms. Warden, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Bidendyke. Um, this is a request for $250,000 from our capital fund to improve the public property's maintenance facility located on Mechanicsburg Road. Um, the facility was built in 1973 and in the past couple of years has received some um, necessary updates such as uh, new exterior siding and a new roof. Um, this, will, this will renovate some interior office space and also provide, um, as I believe Mr. Mayor said in his, um, in his discussion earlier tonight, uh, locker rooms, restrooms, and I believe a lunchroom, also a reception area. And uh, Mr. Denning explained earlier there would also be guest parking. The um, entryway, the public entryway, would, would be located toward the south end of the building, uh, which is where the public parking area would then be. Um, and this will also provide the facility a, an opportunity to have more security um, in terms of their, their public reception area. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Oh, I thought that uh, Mr. Denning gave a, a good point this, this afternoon when we discussed this. He said that currently there are no um, female employees on the maintenance uh, team, but sh would there ever be? She would not have access to a restroom or locker room um, as all of the, the males there do. So this will also include... Um, the development of a ladies' locker and restroom um, for for the maintenance department, which is which will be very nice. And this will also um, update the facility to meet all ADA standards, which is also very important. Um, and temporarily, in case anyone's uh, concerned, temporarily the office uh, folks will be moved to the mezzanine level during construction. And as long as this is approved and uh, there are no major kinks in the supply chain. We hope to be finished with this project by early July. Um, if there are any questions, Mr. Denning has uh, graced us with his presence this evening, but I would move to adopt um, adopt this measure tonight. Okay, motion to adopt by Ms. Warden. Is there a second? Second. I heard, saw Mr. Cavins and his lips moved. He did <laughs> not much came out, but I heard him. He's a quiet. So, second by... Uh, Mr. Cavan, any any questions or comments? We just owe it to the city to maintain the properties that have been entrusted to us and, and, and uh, improve them when necessary. And this absolutely is seems necessary to me. Well, I just want to point out that I think Mr. Denning's taking a page out of uh, Chief Saley's book where he first gets a vehicle Big ticket vehicle, mm -hmm. and then he hits you up with uh, improvements to uh, existing buildings. Oh, if you give him very a clever there, Mr. Denning. If you give him a mouse a cookie, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Except we still haven't gotten a ride on the uh, new ladder truck yet. So may maybe you can beat him with a punch and invite us to the christening of the new uh, dump truck. <laughs> Sounds fair. All right, well, mm -hmm. you, you would kind of elevate yourself uh, there if you beat him with a punch. Just, I'm not angry, I'm just saying as the song lyrics go. Mr. Silvestri. Yes, I want to thank uh, Kurt Denning for all the work that he and his team both do, all do together. Uh, and I want to thank him for uh, making good use of this space up till now. Uh, from my visits with him in the past, I can say that this is a... Uh, a facility in our city that I think the renovations have been long overdue. And if I'm not mistaken, there really is no public entrance way. Because I remember it felt kind of awkward just walking in there. You feel like Go you're in the, the middle of the, of the garage area. And there really is no way for the public to, uh, you know, interact and, and approach uh, the, the facility. So I'm looking forward to what that looks like uh, and the details of that. But thank you so much for bringing this forward. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Seeing none, would you please call the roll on the motion to adopt? Silvestri? Yes. Warden? Yes. Ansel? Yes. Cavan? Yes. Costanzic? Yes. Myers? Yes. And Sanders? Yes. Resolution number 21-64 passes. Now that brings us to our miscellaneous portion. And we have... Uh, Four people have signed up on the signed up sheet. Uh, you will be asked to uh, come uh, to the uh, lectern there and state your name and address, and then uh, you'll have two minutes to speak on the topic that uh, you've signed up on. So the first one we'll start with uh, is Penny Mendenhall Stone. Thank you. I'm glad for the opportunity to raise some issues about where I live in Worcester. And I've been in, on my street for 27 years, and some of my neighbors here are here. It's a, it's a street, I live on McKinley Street, 950 McKinley Street, and, and I work downtown. So I do see all that's happening great for the city downtown. But I'm glad that the tourists did not have to drive up and down McKinley Street this year to get to downtown. It's been, a, it's been an ordeal the whole year. They replaced a water and sewer line on the east side of the street. And the, the manner in which it was done created more problems. Um, they put down gravel that washed into the ditches. When I got a hold of the engineer, he told me we are an unimproved street so those ditches can remain. The gravel that was put on the street washed into those ditches along with the straw that was thrown on when the grass seed went down and caused those all to plug up the culverts all along the way so that water went into people's property or went into the road and eroded further the shoulders along our street. Our st you can't drive up and down our street as normal traffic because the shoulders are so deteriorated, two cars can't fit most of the way on that street. Uh, I just would like to know if Worcester, when you live on an in, unimproved street, decides to disinvest and you're always an unimproved street, or what's, what's out there for we people who are unimproved? Uh, Mr. Mr. Rice told me that we were on the list next year for resurfacing. One of the problems that happened was that the, the work that they did on the east side, my, my place and two other places on the street, we were contacted by the utility company that there was a gas leak. Now I'm told that the gas line is supposed to be replaced on this side before, it's, before we have a chance to be resurfaced. But when I talked to the people that were working in the street, the gas company, they said this city would be way better off to get this done rather than have these emergency situations happen. They were there one night, one day from 8.30 in the morning until 1 o'clock. The next day in front of my house, they were there from 8.30 until 3.30 in the morning working to assure that this wasn't a critical situation for us on our street. I don't know how the rest of the city works, but we are residents here, and we're not happy with the way things are, and we need some information about when this is going to get taken care of appropriately and how we can possibly become. We did 
In the letter we received, the city did respond to all of us who signed a petition. I sent a petition to Mr. Rice and Mr. Kobarczyk. And it, they did tell us that um, if we wanted to become <coughs> improved, that we would be assessed higher taxes. Uh, that's, that's just general. I don't know if that means a lot or a little. Uh, that's all the information that I have, but we certainly, uh, we're certainly not in a good situation right now, and I don't think it's appropriate that the city disinvests in unimproved streets. My property loses value. Everybody on that street's property loses value when that street is not maintained appropriately. So I just wanted to raise that issue tonight and hope that we can get some appropriate action on it. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Linda Smith, please state your name and address, and then tell us what you're here about. All right. My name is Linda Smith. I'm the convener of the um, Worcester Homelessness Task Force, and I live at 3108 Bayberry Cove in Worcester. Um, over the past um, year, basically, um, members of our task force have engaged in conversations with different ones of you here um, during the Let's Chat sessions so that were held earlier this year to keep you updated on um, the things that we've been working on on behalf of the homeless people of Worcester. And I just wanted to share with you tonight that um, many times you've referred us to work with this, the Salvation Army and the um, uh, 180 organization, Metropolitan Housing. We have very, very close relationship with all of them. And just in September, um, the Salvation Army and uh, 180 invited us to work with them um, to help find volunteers and um, uh, solicit donations for the severe weather shelter that's going to be opening here in 1st of December. So I wanted to um, update you on that progress. Uh, we immediately visited with 25 churches here in Worcester and handed out um, uh, some um, information about volunteer um, training opportunities that were available to us and also information regarding donations to be forwarded to the um, uh, United Way of Worcester uh, Wayne counties to um, uh, Worcester, uh, the Wayne and Holmes counties to be um, directed towards the uh, severe weather shelter. Um, th those um, uh, opportunities uh, were given to the churches to put in their bulletins and whatever. I brought you some copies of this tonight, so if you haven't seen this already, you can um, have an opportunity to look at it. Perhaps you want to make copies of it and share it with each other. Um, I, had, I don't have any uh, final numbers or even any moderate numbers about how much money has been donated already, but I know that there have been significant donations directed to Wayne, uh, the United Way already. Last year, the shelter was open for 58 nights. Uh, the ability for that shelter to be open is dependent upon the amount of money that's available to pay for the nighttime staff person that spends the night there from 10 o'clock in the evening till 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, this year they've um, uh, raised that rate from $15 to $18 to pay a professional staff to be there. In the evening hours from, eight to, uh, from 6 to 10, um, it's basically volunteers, and that's what we were recruiting folks uh, from the community. We held our first um, training session for those volunteers on November 1st, we had 40 people show up. Uh, that included a, a large number of uh, young folks from uh, one of the fraternity houses at the College of Worcester. Um, we have another training session scheduled for November 29th, which is, I believe, next or two weeks from tonight. Um, and we hope to have some more people show up and perhaps some of the other ones come back for a second session and have a tour of the Salvation Army facilities and see how it's uh, arranged for the night. Uh, and just let you know, there are well past your two minutes. Oh, excuse me. I didn't realize there was a time limit. Yeah, when the timer goes off. 
Oh, that's what that noise was? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. There was a couple of other things I'd like to share, you, share with you about the progress if we made, if I could, could have a few more minutes. Could I ask a question? You know, as it states, this is not a, you know, back and forth. We just want to hear what your comments okay. are. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with that. Thank you. Just wanted to share what's happening. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, Julia Gertis, if you would state your uh, name and address and tell us what you're talking about. Hello, um, my name is Julia Gertis and I live at 1189 Bell Avenue. Um, I'm here tonight to speak in support of the Worcester Racial Justice Coalition's um, suggested policy changes regarding no-knock warrants and chokeholds, um, as well as greater data transparency on the use of force um, with regards to demographics. Um, the Worcester Racial Justice Coalition um, is advocating for a complete ban of chokeholds and no-knock warrants um, to be used by law enforcement officers. It's a great risk to citizens and police officers. Um, and as for data transparency, there isn't enough transparency regarding um, it, uh, data regarding um, gender, um, race, um, in the use of force uh, by law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, last uh, individual is uh, Robert Dunn. Again, uh, state your name and uh, address and uh, tell us what you're here about. Uh, my name is Robert Dunn. I live at 668 McKinley Street, and I'm also here kind of about the, the conditions of the road on McKinley. My problems are the culverts are plugged. Well, I've already spent $220 to have them come and try and open my drains. Rotor Rooter said we need to get the city to come down with a hydro flush truck and a vac truck so when they clean the, the dirt out, they can vac it up. Otherwise, we're going to keep getting flooding, and it's going to keep eroding under the street. I did talk to Mr. Kobolajczyk, I think his secretary. He was on vacation. <clears throat> they said they would turn it over. They talked to the crew. They came back the next day. They did pack the new dirt down in along the road so it wouldn't keep collapsing down in. But if they don't get the drains open, it's going to continue to wash out, and we're going to continue to have that problem. On my side of the street, it's on the west side where they did the uh, pipes, and they did put new asphalt down, but it's digging underneath that asphalt, and it has collapsed twice now. So they need to get a hydro flush truck down there and clean them all out along the road. That would take care of most of that problem of flooding and everything else, but they got to be opened. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we'll just uh, start with Ms. Warden. Uh, on the uh, miscellaneous portion for council. Um, thank you, thank you to all who came and spoke this evening um, during our miscellaneous section. Um, after the meeting, I'd like to speak with Ms. Mendenhall Stone and Mr. Dunn, um, if you have a moment that you could share with me, thank you. Um, and I have nothing further to add, I don't know, thanks. All right, Mr. Ansel. It's nice to see the audience full this evening. I also highlight that. Thank you for attending the Worcester City Council session. Nothing more, Mr. President. Okay. Mr. Cavan. Yes, I would, I would echo that. Th thank you, folks, for showing up. And uh, uh, I don't have anything else to add uh, this evening as well. Mr. Bostanzik. Uh, nothing more at this time. Mr. Myers. Uh, thank you, President Bidendike. I want to thank Ashley Hirschberger, Leslie Baus, uh, for all the work they've put in over the last six years or so on the transportation program uh, and the success that that's been. Um, I also want to thank the, uh, the folks from Main Street and the Visitors Bureau and the Chamber uh, for the investment they make in our tourism. And 
my opinion, I guess, and, and I would advocate for at some point in the future we consider that allocating all of the bed tax fund. It seems like that return on investment for the funds we do give them uh, proves out to be very, very successful. And I would say that it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be bad to consider investing the entire bed tax fund, which is only an insignificant part of our $28 million budget, uh, but it seems like it would help those three organizations immensely. Thank you. Mr. Sanders? Based on everything that's already been said, I have nothing to add. And Mr. Sylvester? I do want to just briefly thank all those who came to tonight's meeting. I want to thank the city administration. I know there were extra members of the city administration that came to uh, um, be present for the budget discussions as they kicked off. And also, uh, as Mr. Myers indicated, the transportation program, all those that have uh, worked on that, and uh, especially the uh, people that spoke. So thank you, and thank you so much to all who have come, even those that didn't speak. Thank you for your interest, and thank you for your presence here this evening. That's all I have. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Ansel, moving to adjourn. Second by Mr. Myers. All in favor, say aye. 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 We're adjourned.